Hey guys, Scott with Modern Classic Moto here. Today I'm going to be installing some Olin's fork springs on my 2018 XSR 700. Along the way, I'm gonna kinda of show you how to do it. I'm pretty excited about this upgrade. It's one I wanted to do since I first got the bike. One thing I noticed about the bike when I first got it is that it squishes down quite a bit, especially when hitting that front brake. So I wanted to upgrade the front forks. Not ever having done it before, I didn't really know how to go about it. So after doing some research, I found that most people are doing this Owen spring upgrade and that comes with additional adjustable dampeners as well. I'm about six foot two, 200 pounds, but even people that are lighter have found this upgrade quite helpful and uh, so that it makes a pretty big difference. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at what's in the box. So inside here, I don't know if you can see it, get a couple stickers, looks like probably the instructions, another sticker, another sticker, and then the beautiful springs themselves with the, uh, they call it the sleeve. All right, also inside we have the dampeners, like this. I'm excited to put these on, I think they look pretty nice as well. The Owens fork oil wasn't available at the time I purchased these, so I just got some Maxima racing oil, 20 weight, uh, which is a bit heavier than what it comes with from the factory, and this is what was recommended by Owens, so that's what I decided to go with weight-wise. Um, I don't think the difference in brand is gonna matter much. All right, on to the fun stuff, so, you're gonna want a basic set of metric T handles. We'll need a couple sockets here and there, but I'll go over that as we get there. I'm gonna start with taking the front calipers off and then I'll be taking the front wheel off. The caliper bolts, there's two on each side. Gonna be a 12 millimeter. So I just removed this top one. Now I'm gonna remove the lower one. So it goes inside. Get it started coming off the rotor there. And then we're also going to want to remove the ABS wire right there. Now that both calipers are loose on each side, as well as this ABS wire being disconnected, we should be able to take the wheel off completely. So before removing this axle bolt, we're gonna loosen this pinch bolt right here, which is a six millimeter Allen. Now that that's loose, we can remove this axle bolt. goes. When you take this wheel off, sometimes these bearing spacers will fall off. There's one on each side. Make sure you keep track of those so you can put them on when it goes back together. I just take them off so I don't lose them and set them aside with all the extra hardware. All right, now that the front wheel is off, I'm gonna go ahead and take this front fender off, which will disconnect the forks from each other. I've got an aftermarket fender, so yours will be a little bit different, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. There's also a couple of brake line brackets you'll probably have to disconnect. I'm gonna snip that off, pull the fender out. Just gonna hang the calipers kind of over here, just out of the way. All right, now that that's all off, we can focus on loosening the triple clamps. There's one. 
There's two bolts right there and one right at the top. I loosen the bottom two first and then slowly loosen the top one while I pull in the fork. That way it doesn't slide out and hit the ground. All right, now onto the other side. All right, there you have it. Both forks are out. Now they got them off, I'm gonna take these caps off, and get the fluid out. One easy way to remember which side is which is the little pinch bolt is gonna be on the right side fork, that way you don't get it mixed up. All right, now I'm gonna take this top cap off. It's a 22, got to use an impact for it. There goes a the little spring washer. Some blows definitely would have been a good idea. When you're all out of gloves and you gotta use your wife's small ones. So I'm going to carefully grab that little washer between the spring and the sleeve. So you've got the sleeve, the little washer that goes in between it, and then the original spring. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. That's 99% of it. A little bit of cleanup. The new stuff. A little side by side comparison. As you can see, in my right hand is the new Olin's one, which is just a little bit shorter, but it's going to have a stiffer spring. We're also putting thicker oil in there magically change outfits. On this part of the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to add the fork oil into the fork tube, bleed it out, and then properly check the level with this handy tool over here. First thing you wanna do, make sure everything's out of the tube, make sure you got the old spring, washer, and sleeve out of there. Once it's completely empty, pump it into the bucket. Make sure you get all the old stuff out of there. We got most of the oil out of there, so now what we're gonna do is add the new stuff in. You wanna put a good amount in there. After you get it all in there, you kind of just want to start pumping the fork until you stop hearing that gurgling noise. And that's when you know it's all been bled into there. Go ahead and add a little bit more. I'm going to dump a little bit out because I know there's a bit too much in there. All right, now per the Olin's instruction manual, it says you want to set the level to 165 millimeters. And how you do that is you want to make sure that the fork tube is completely collapsed. I've already done that. You basically just want to push down on it until it can't go any further. And then if you have a tool like this, this is the fork oil level tool. You want to set it to 165 millimeters. Stick it in the top here, in the top of it. Stick it in the top here, in the top of it. And basically what it means by 165 millimeters is that you're measuring from the top of the tube down 165 millimeters. So I've already said to that spec, what I'm going to do now is just start sucking the oil out of it. And the idea is once you can't suck any more oil, you know the level set. <laughs> Sounds like we're there. Now you can hear it getting all aerated. Double check just to be safe. Yep. All right. Just because I don't think it was completely level, I'm gonna pour a little bit more back in. Just to double check. A 
We are at 165 millimeters. This is exactly what it wants. Now we can go ahead and add the spring in, add this washer in, and add the sleeve in. All right, then you want to torque it to about 10 foot-pounds. After that, you are good to go. All right, there you have it. The install is done. I am going to take it for a test ride tomorrow in the daylight, and then I'll do a follow-up video on how it rides. I'm going to leave the preload adjustment as it is for now, see how stiff it is, and then kind of adjust it as needed. Another upgrade I've done since the last video is I had some speed blocks added to the gas tank panel, as well as the Yamaha emblem, and then I also installed the 7-inch Brogue headlight bucket with my own headlight. I think that turned out pretty sweet myself. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any other questions, also please comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks.